Actually, it was very unlong gestating. It happened very quickly, but it's been finished for a long time. It happened um, towards the end of 2014, in July, I think it was. Richard's agent called me up and said, Ian McEwan's written a novel, it hasn't been published yet, he thinks it's a film, and he um, and Richard Eyre, his friend, wants to direct it, and they both like to offer it to you to produce it. And what do you think? So that never happens. Uh, and so I read it and, uh, and said yes. We made it almost immediately, and um, it was finished a, a year ago, but we've been holding off until Emma was available to promote it because that's what it takes these days. You have to be uh, on the right date with the right promotion and publicity. So it was very fast and now very slow, but we hope that in uh, just over a week it will be um, a big success. I've uh, admired Emma for many, many years. I produced Love Actually. Her, f her most famous scene now is her crying in the bedroom or trying not to cry in the bedroom. And I've cornered the market on scenes of Emma not crying in the bedroom because we have one in this film too. Um, she can do anything. I think this is her best part for, well, since The Remains of the Day and Howard's End. She's fabulous. This is the Emma that we all absolutely love, you know, intelligent and humane, um, touching, um, clever. Uh, all the things she is actually in real life. Finn, I didn't know, obviously nobody knew um, until Dunkirk. We uh, met him. Uh, just before he made Dunkirk, um, his agent said, you know, he's the star of Dunkirk. We didn't quite believe it, but of course he is, and, uh, you know, justifiably so. I think he's brilliant. He's, he's, the thing that so impressed us about him was how real he is, how truthful he is. You know, and he looks at the camera and um, you, you believe him, you believe everything he says, which is obviously critical. He's got fan fantastic um, prospects, I think, as a, an actor. In a cinematic landscape so often populated by escapism and fun, why do you think it's especially important that we see these kinds of stories dealing with these kinds of themes on our cinema screen? Well, so these, these are the sorts of films that we're used to going to see in the 70s. Remember all those brilliant uh, stories. I mean, I won't compare it to Scorsese and, and the like, but um, those films are few and far between these days. And uh, who knows what the future holds? It may be that... You know, we're the last, the last wave, um, but I think, I think it really is tragic if so. What I'm hoping personally is that the audience will actually lose its um, passion for these big visual effects extravaganzas, you know, yet one more sequel, um, Adventures Assemble for the 15th time. Um, I'd much rather personally go and see a film like this. When audiences do go and see it, as we hope they will, what are you most hoping overall they take away from the experience when they walk out of the cinema? They'll feel as though they've had um, an emotional experience, the like of which they, that they don't find often in, in, uh, in cinemas. They will have experienced all sorts of emotions. They'll be thinking. I mean, people who've seen this film say, I woke up thinking about it and you know, we discussed it the next day and all of the issues because it's not a straightforward story and there are reverberations. Well, that's, that's you know, all you wish for, really.